welcome into another edition of GC Live. I am Kendall Smith, joined alongside of Wes Mitchell. He is back. He is better than ever. He went to the beach last week. He abandoned us. And I will say, doing GC Live without you was just not the same. So how was the trip, Wes, to start us off? It was good. I, uh, I'm, I'll be honest. I'm like, I'm at that mental part where you're just like, all right, I got to check back in because you just check out for a week. So um, I feel like I left at a good time, though. It was like 100 people committed to South Carolina, it felt like. And then it was like, boom, I was on vacation. I wasn't here for the Jaden Robinson commit, but, uh, you know, the, the Dante Reno, uh, DJ Braswell, that was like right before I was officially clocking out. So, uh, so it was good. I, I got some sun, you know, enjoyed some drinks on the beach. Uh, I need to get a haircut from what I'm seeing right now. But other than that, it was, it was fantastic, and I mean, we were just sitting here talking. Media day, I won't be there, but you'll be there. There'll be storylines. That's next week, and then, I mean, you're talking about just a couple of weeks from preseason camp starting. Once preseason camp starts, it's, I mean, before you know it, the season is here. It's honestly one of my favorite times of the year because everyone is so jazzed up. They're so excited. When you get to that preseason camp around August fifth and you walk in there for that first day of practice. I remember last year, it was just such an indescribable, indescribable feeling uh, to walk in and just to see everybody. It's like the first day of school or Christmas morning or whatever you want to call it. I think Jabari Ellis like compared it to something along those lines last year. And it really does feel uh, that way. So very excited. Lots to get to this week. You didn't miss a ton on the football end, Wes, but you did miss uh, some basketball action. We're going to talk about Gigi Jackson in just a little bit here on GC Live. But before we get into it, we'll talk about everything. We'll talk about the recruits that we didn't have a chance to talk about last week. We'll talk about some decision dates. We'll talk about media day. But I do want to start off with some timely news because today is Dylan Lonergan's decision day. He's been a guy that South Carolina has been going after for quite some time now, a four-star quarterback in the class of 2023 out of the state of Georgia. So he's committing today at 4 p.m., I believe. It's between South Carolina, Stanford, and Alabama. So he's been very diligent in the process. And as we know, Dante Reno committed a couple of weeks ago. So definitely shakes up the quarterback situation there. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, I, I don't know where Dylan's going to go. I would I would assume Alabama. If not Alabama, I would say probably Stanford. Um, it, it does seem like the answer from a Carolina perspective would just be not South Carolina. And uh, you know, I think it's been trending this direction for a while. People that really follow recruiting and really pay attention, uh, you know, I, I think no, you know, we've kind of been trying to say, look, um, don't don't just assume that he's going to South Carolina. I think there were some assumptions out there because of the fact that there is the thought process was that he South Carolina has kind of been in a good position for a long time that he would ultimately end up there. But, um, you know, it doesn't appear that's going to be the case. It's been trending towards that not being the case for quite some time now. And, you know, I, I think when you look at South Carolina's quarterback recruiting, we've always, Kendall, sort of framed it as, you know, this 2023 class and this 2024 class kind of together. And, and the, the trio there that we were talking about, Dante Reno, of course, Jaden Bradford and Dylan Lonergan, now you throw in Jalen Daniels as well, who is technically a class 2022 guy, a quote unquote walk on. I suspect he'll end up being on scholarship sooner rather than later. So when you look at the quarterback room, I, I think South Carolina is very happy to uh, you know include Jalen Daniels in that. Very happy to have Dante Reno in that. It's just felt like Reno was kind of their guy. Um, going all the way back to, to November when they first offered him and, and really started to get to know him, it seemed like he was the guy they really, really wanted. And so they got Dante in the mix. He's already, as everyone would expect, been heavily recruiting people. He's that face, uh, and Kendall's smiling right now because, Kendall, you, you know, you've interviewed Dante. Like, he's, he's, got that, he's got that personality where he understands the – responsibilities, I guess you would say, of being a quarterback and that it kind of goes well beyond just throwing the football, right? I feel like Dante Reno is like a face of the class type kid. Like he 
he takes on that responsibility to um, sort of go out there and be the guy to, to sort of hype South Carolina up to other kids. And I, I think he takes that very, very seriously. And obviously, you know, there's been the rumor for some time that Dante could reclass. Um, he is sort of, I would say publicly kind of shut that down a, a bit, but I don't know if you could completely rule that out either. So that, that'll be something we're tracking moving forward. But, um, you know, Lonergan, I, I think uh, definitely not South Carolina, but I, I think they're really, really happy to have Reno. And uh, you're already seeing – he was already recruiting for Carolina before he even committed. But you're seeing that go to another level, in my opinion, now that he is publicly committed here. Um, I guess that was like, I don't know, 10 days ago or so. Yeah, Dante Reno already taking that job of recruiting very seriously. I think it's every single day that I get on Twitter and he's got a new hashtag, hashtag we want Cam Pringle, hashtag we want Josiah Thompson every single day. I think they need to start like compensating him for his recruiting services. Uh, totally can't do that. But, you know. Him and Pup Howard. Uh, Pup Howard. Like, yeah. Those two guys are heavy, heavy recruiters, I feel like, for Carolina. And that's a great thing for South Carolina because you obviously want guys that are bought into the program, and those two certainly are. And it's interesting because Marcus Satterfield did a ton of that recruiting on Dante Reno, and didn't you run into him at the Beach West? What's the deal with that? Yeah, so random. Um, I'm at uh, I'm at I'm at Frank's uh, near Polly's Island, and so I, I we're pulling up right, and literally just going to park, and I'm like. That's, I swear that was the Satterfields that we just went by. So uh, sure enough, um, my fiance and I, Mackenzie, we were at the same restaurant as the Satterfields, but at the beach at the same exact time. It was so, it was so random. So uh, yeah, we, we had a good laugh about that because, you know, what are the odds? Obviously you run into coaches in Columbia, you know, every now and then. Fair, on a, that wouldn't be surprising for you to just run into a coach in Columbia. But to run into him at the beach was uh, was, was pretty random. So, Wes, I want to talk a little bit about those commits that committed just before you left for vacation. And then you mentioned Jaden Robinson committing like the day that you left for vacation. We'll break down the video here on GC Live so that you can kind of share your opinion on some of these guys. So the first one that I want to start out with is Dontavius Braswell, four star running back in that class of 2023 DJ Braswell as he goes by. Uh, he's a big time recruit for South Carolina and Mike Yuva, who just commented. So shout out Mike for, uh, for tuning in. We did the show together last week. He did an awesome job talking about this and just kind of going through what a huge commitment this is for South Carolina and Ontario Hardesty, the running backs coach, because it is kind of that first big time running back commitment under him in Shane Beamer's tenure at South Carolina. Yeah. And to get a high school guy, I think as opposed to having to go to the transfer portal again, I think recruiting the way it is right now, Kendall, you kind of – you establish your board of, of guys you want. And then if you miss, you kind of – it used to be where you have to go to plan B, plan C, plan D, whatever. And you, you still have to do that to an extent. But I, I think these days it's kind of like, all right, if you miss on enough high school guys, you go to the portal. And that's what they kind of did last cycle, last go-round. So they go they, – they get some guys who I think are talented – Christian Bill Smith, obviously, Lavasia Carroll, obviously. But in the case of Christian Bill Smith, you're talking about having one year of eligibility. So I think Braswell was a really nice pickup in terms of just getting not only a talented guy, but a kid that has a full, you know, four years to play five, uh, including the red shirt, of eligibility left. And, you know, he's a four star kid. Uh, I know he's four-star on, on three. I think he's four-star on most, if not all, the services out there. So uh, he's definitely a composite four-star when you average them all up. So, um, you know, this was a, a little – I would say it was a little bit of a surprise. Most most people that were following Gamecock Central knew going into the announcement not to pay attention to that, quote, final four, which apparently was just kind of Braswell having some fun with the process. Like, I – you know, there there was some questions about, you know, well, did Carolina – was Carolina out of the top four and then they just came from behind and landed it? Um, I don't think that was the case. I think it was just um, he was throwing people for a loop. Carolina was always kind of the final two. 
South Carolina and Nebraska. And uh, he wanted to play closer to home. You know, you're talking about a kid from Georgia. Most of the Georgia kids are kind of SEC guys. So it just made sense for him to go to South Carolina versus Nebraska, in my opinion. So, um, you know, very physical runner, but has track speed as well. Um, kind of one of those shorter, stockier running backs that has a low um, center of gravity, uh, can break tackles, really an all-around running back, in, in my opinion, when you're looking at the skill set standpoint. And they really, Kendall liked his physicality. They did one of the spring evaluation visits. They saw him in person at his practice. And just they kind of liked how he set the tone physically for his entire offense in that practice. So I think this is a great pickup for Carolina. And again, getting a high school guy, you can you can kind of build that room around him moving forward and, and let you, you know, they've been good at running back. They've had some really good players there. This is sort of, you want to be always be able to kind of restock um, the room there moving forward. And I think that's what Braswell does. Wes, you were living up to the hype of your recruiting insider title because you knew the whole time you were like, I know this is going to happen. Don't pay attention to that final four. South Carolina still very much in the hunt here for this recruit. And lo and behold, they absolutely were. And DJ Braswell committing to South Carolina just about a week ago. Again, a four star running back out of the state of Georgia. Another guy uh, that we have got to talk about is Jaden Robinson. He committed just right around when you left. Another four-star guy, a linebacker out of the state of Florida, which is huge for South Carolina because in the last couple of weeks, two four-star linebackers coming from the Sunshine State. Mike and I talked about it last week, but obviously great high school football in the state of Georgia. Grayson Pop Howard being that first guy to commit to South Carolina for that linebacker position. Jaden coming right up after him, and I know this is a pickup that South Carolina is just so excited about. Yeah, huge pickup, and um, if we have time, I want to talk about Pup as well, because I he had committed one. I don't think you and I did a show since the time he committed either. Uh, maybe we did, but I don't think we did. And to get those two guys, though, as a duo from the Sunshine State and, and being, you know, kids that Carolina's been on for, for a long, long time. Like, this was this is a great recruiting job when you consider they got in on both guys early. They developed the early relationships. They continued the process. I, I would say both of those guys kind of, like what I, I like to call it, they went the distance in the recruiting process in that you get them on campus. I remember Jaden Robinson visiting South Carolina last summer, and that was the first time you could actually have guys on campus again post-COVID. And, you know, both Pup and Jaden, they came in during the summer camp stuff. Then they visited for games during the fall. Then they visited for junior days in like that January, February early March timetable. Then they came to spring practice. They both were at the spring game. Then they both took their official visits. So you're really checking off the boxes. If, if you can get a player on your campus for all of those different scenarios, games, unofficials, junior days, a spring practice, a spring game, and an official visit to cap it off, you're going to have a really, really good shot to land those players. And so, uh, you know, I, I think – I think for, for Pup Howard, Carolina, you know, I think they led for most of the time, but they really had to fight off Florida in the end. I think for Jaden Robinson, I think Carolina had established a huge lead there, and it was going to be really tough for anybody to step in and, and beat them. Kentucky tried to make a run at him. I, I think they were maybe one of the schools that had the best chance to potentially change that, but Carolina in great shape uh, throughout the process. You know, and there there are some connections there. Um, you know, his one of his, his I believe his now head coach. Um, there there are connections there with uh, Jaheim Bell is what I'm trying to say. So Jaheim uh, is someone that Jaden Robinson looks up to. Jaheim hosted him on the official visit as his player host, and as Jaheim will tell you on Twitter, Jaheim is undefeated uh, when it comes to to hosting guys, and he he'll let you know about that, right? Um, he'll he, he's not shy about letting people know about his recruiting record. So, yeah, you, you put Jaheim on him and that, that finished it off. Yeah, Jaheim absolutely deserves the hype surrounding his success when it comes to hosting 
players and uh, Shane Beamer said he's going to be very busy this fall as well because they're just going to keep throwing players at Jaheim and hoping that they'll come to South Carolina. But yeah, you mentioned Florida there with Jaden Robinson. They offered him the day before he committed to South Carolina. And I said this last week on the show, but Taylor Edwards, who's in charge of player personnel and does a lot with recruiting for South Carolina, he put out a tweet um, that said like 16 month process. If you're reading this, it's too late. It was kind of like the Drake album cover, which is so funny because as you mentioned, it was such a diligent process for Jaden Robinson and South Carolina spent so much time recruiting him, which obviously paid off. And when I talk to so many of these players and I know you talk to them all the time too, Wes, something they always say about South Carolina that stands out is the relationships that are built between the players, the coaches, the recruiting personnel, whatever it might be in South Carolina really seems to go that extra mile. And that paid off with Jaden Robinson. Let's talk about Puff Howard, though, while we're on the topic of four-star linebackers out of the state of Florida. Another huge pickup for South Carolina at the point he committed, uh, obviously one of the biggest pickups in the class so far and still to this point as well. So what do we know about him and just how big this is for South Carolina? Yeah, and uh, Kendall, that was such a weird offer by Florida, by the way, for for Jaden. Like, Jaden had already committed to South Carolina privately when Florida offered. I, I thought that was that was so odd. Uh, they basically offered him, I would say, no, either knowing they were going to lose him or if they didn't know they were going to lose him, you're kind of like, how did you not know? How did you not already know he was going to South Carolina? So I, I thought that was that was incredibly weird. But, um, yeah, to, to get to Pup, I mean, I feel like this kid is like a centerpiece of your class type talent defensively. You know, he, he's got leadership ability. Um, for, for everything that, and by the way, I'm going to have an article coming out with one of his coaches, um, depending on how long it takes me, either today or tomorrow. And he just went on and on about what a person Pup is off the field, what a leader he is. For everything that he has going his way from a physical, like, skill set, athleticism standpoint, which is a lot. I mean, you, you, throw, you throw in the film, this kid can do it all. He can run. He's physical. He can cover. He can rush the passer. You know, he's a true SEC linebacker, and those guys are few and far between, I, I think, especially for South Carolina. So add all those things to the fact that he's an excellent person, excellent GPA, excellent leader, has now started really recruiting others to South Carolina as well, and – He's just the type of guy you want to kind of build your program around. And I, I look at what Clayton White has done. Obviously, he's the defense coordinator, but he coaches the linebackers as well. Going out and getting a kid like Stone Blanton in last year's class, then going out and getting Pup in this class, getting Jaden Robinson in this class. I mean, that's some of the best recruiting on paper at the linebacker position that I've seen South Carolina um, have kind of in a row since I've been following the team. A lot of times, when Carolina has had good linebacker play, it has been more about solid evaluations. You know, you, you look at Ernest Jones. He was fantastic. He's playing for the Rams now. He's been actually carved out a, a really solid start to his NFL career, I think. But you know, he was a, a mid three star guy. It was it was a great job to evaluate him and land him and develop him. Not taking that away, but I'm just talking about on the paper, on paper landing four star prospects beating out other major programs. We've not seen that necessarily at the linebacker position. Look at Stone Blanton going into Mississippi, beating out both Mississippi schools for him. Now going into Florida, beating out Florida schools for both Pup and thanks to Florida offering Jaden late. Um, you can say they beat out the Gators as well there. So, you know, I, I think that's very impressive. Worth pointing out. We didn't know, you know, Clayton White's, ability as a recruiter coming in I, I think everybody saw the track record on the field I think nobody really knew one way or the other what he was going to be like as a recruiter um, I think you got to throw major major credit his way for what he's done uh, landing these guys uh, you know the, the proof is right there in the commits by his name yeah a big season last year for the defense for South Carolina Clayton White coming out and 
you know, he received accolades and lots of attention for what he did for the program. And that, you know, has to continue on the recruiting trail as well. And it certainly has. So great things for the South Carolina defense. Also, Good things for the South Carolina offense last week. I do see we have some questions in the comments, which I'll certainly uh, get to, especially surrounding Nicholas Harbor. Uh, we'll get to that in one second. I think we just need to round out really quickly on one last commit who we've talked about so much on the show, but committing on July 2nd for star quarterback Dante Reno. This was not a surprise whatsoever. He's in the class of 2024, not the class of 2023. but. I liked his recruitment video or his commitment video where he uh, did the little family feud announcement at the Carolina cookout. So he'd been committed for several weeks before it actually went public. Although you could say it was like semi-public because they really didn't try to hide it. Yeah, you didn't need an RPM recruiting prediction machine or a crystal ball or you didn't need anything like that to tell you where this kid was going. I mean, he has not hidden it one bit leading up to it. Which is kind of it was kind of actually maybe a little refreshing almost you know you had it was like you had you had Braswell the same day who was like yeah Carolina's not in my top four and then he picks you know it was kind of a more typical recruitment where you're just kind of trying to hide things and keep people guessing Dante is literally recruiting for South Carolina publicly on Twitter leading up to yes. his announcement um, you know and even picking up the yell hat. Uh, during the live stream uh, as a not a shot but almost as like a, a little like hat tip to his dad I, th I thought that was cool his dad of course for those who don't know is the head football coach at Yale which is really cool so obviously the kids got it all um, very just detail oriented uh, you know you talk to him when you interview him he gives you these long thought out thoughtful responses where you can tell he's like actually processing and trying to give you a legitimate thought as opposed to just giving you the quickest quote he can come up with to answer the question and um likable personality has visited south carolina several times in the last few months and i think it's going to take ownership you look at i think his his commitment does so much for them in that 2024 class and that he's already taken ownership of trying to get other people there. Like you look at uh, Mazio Bennett from Greenville, those two guys have hit it off instantly. Uh, you know, you talked earlier, Cam Pringle, Josiah Thompson, uh, the two big in-state offensive linemen who Carolina has been on forever. There's a, there's a relationship there. And I, I think that matters. Then you just look at the talent. I mean, his ability to spend the football, Kendall, you and I watched him in person at Carolina's camp. Um, you know, it, it was so clear that he and, you know, Jaden was there the same day. He and Jaden Bradford were just on another planet um, compared to like the group a as a whole that, that was at camp that day. And I would encourage people that really want to see what he's capable of, just go look at his Twitter and some of the stuff he's retweeted from his private quarterback coach. Um, just his ability to throw the football from all angles, um, you know, to, to put, to throw the ball accurately without having to get his feet necessarily set. It's a, it's kind of a different approach to the quarterback position you're seeing these days. It used to be everything is robotic. Everything coaches wanted it to be the exact same way, repeatable motion every single time. Now they almost coach quarterbacks up like a shortstop where you're throwing the football from different angles, trying to avoid the rush. And um, this kid just to, to spin it from, from different arm angles and with a quick release, is uh, is very very impressive throw in the fact he's a coach's son as we mentioned um i mean he he checks so many boxes you know that i'm a big fan of dante reno i think he's a great player but i also think he's a really good person as well so excited to finally do an interview with him over the next few weeks hopefully that's a little more personality based uh, so that we can get to know dante a little bit more but yes yeah, so fun to check out his twitter and see what he does especially with his quarterback coach i think it's like the m2 academy or, or something along those lines and just the drills and the preparation that he does it's very, very interesting to watch. I've seen a lot of quarterbacks over the years. I grew up with Sam Howell. Like I've seen them train and I've seen them prepare on multiple levels. 
But what Dante does is very different, but you can tell that his athleticism just shines through in the footwork that he's doing, the stuff he's going over, jump, like it's literally crazy. So go to his Twitter, see what he has because he's extremely talented. I see we had a question about Jaden Bradford. Jaden also in the class of 2023. Wes, you would know more kind of about 2024, 2024. Uh, Yes, that's right. Dante and Jaden both in 2024. You would know a little bit more about this situation uh, than I would. And I still think, you know, with Dante committing, not really sure where Jaden's going. We don't really know his commitment timeline either at this point. Yeah, no. And I, I think, uh, you know, you're talking about a kid that loves this program and has been around the program his whole life, going to games, growing up. And, you know, I think it's, I think it's far too early to kind of write South Carolina off with him, I think some of it, you know, if if Reno decides to reclassify, then that that completely opens the door, you know. And and if they're not going to take a 2023 guy, you know, may, maybe there's a chance to take two class of 2024 guys. You know, quarterback recruiting is uh, is a little bit different. Obviously, you don't always take two, but you do see schools that will sometimes take two. So I think some of that's going to depend on exactly which class Dante ends up in. To be completely clear, Dante has sort of downplayed that possibility when he's been asked about it. But, you know, let's be honest, Kendall. I don't think that's something – because think about your current high school team, your high school teammates. Like, I, I don't think that's something you would say unless you were, like, sure you were making that move, right? Like, I, I think that's something you would downplay until you decided, oh, I'm doing this. And then you would announce it and say it. So I, I'm not saying it's happening, but I'm also – I don't, I don't think you can completely rule it out. If that were to happen, then obviously Reno would technically be your 2023 guy. And then, uh, you know, I, I think uh, that would – I at that point, I would probably say great chance uh, that, that Bradford would end up being your 2024 guy because, in my opinion, that's – where he's always wanted to go is South Carolina. And then I, I think you're once again set up really, really well in, in that quarterback room. And, and there's your two out of three. That's what, that's how we framed it for, for weeks, probably months now has been, can you get two out of three Lonergan, Reno and Bradford? Can you get two out of the three for your, your 2023 and 2024 cycle? So that would be the playbook there for that to happen. And, you know, and, and Bradford has been on campus many times, um, you know, during, during the spring, during summer as well. So they have continued to recruit him. It's not like they're recruiting Reno and not recruiting Bradford. They were really recruiting both those guys. Right. And, you know, it's interesting because I think we also talked about this too, but Dylan Lonergan's decision could play a role in what Dante Reno decides to do. Again, he has said he will not be reclassifying at this point. We don't know anything. This is purely speculation. But if you did have Dylan Lonergan commit to South Carolina and he was in the class of 2023, why would Dante join the class of 20? You know, like it kind of works out to that way. So it's just going to be interesting. This decision from Lonergan tonight may have some sort of impact, might not. Um, again, we talked about Dylan a little bit earlier in the show. If you're interested in hearing about. And we lost Kendall. Um all right, we'll try to effort to get Kendall back. I don't know exactly what happened there. But, uh, yeah, to, to recap a little bit, um, not expecting Lonergan to pick South Carolina. Um, you know, I think it's been trending that way for a while, that it was not going to be South Carolina. It will be official later on uh, this afternoon, this evening. But, you know, at, at this point, not expecting it to be them at all. Or bring people back in. I don't know exactly what I happened. think my computer is hacked because it'll just randomly like exit out of Google Chrome and like everything just turns off, but like it doesn't. I'm concerned. I'm genuinely concerned. I feel like people are getting access to my credit card information. Uh, you, were, you were there, then you were not. Kendall, I'm back now. <laughs> you are back. And uh, while we have a little slight break, uh, we did not tell everybody about our buddy Clint Hammond. Uh, who I actually saw Clint uh, right before I went on vacation. So cl shout out to our buddy Clint. Uh, he, of course, is the branch manager at the Columbia Mortgage Network, at NMLS number 71597. See his email address right there, chammond at mortgagenetwork.com. 
give them a call 803-576-4450 if you're in the market for a new home clint is your dude and i know it is like a scary process right now because interest rates are up they're all over the place and uh clint will uh will help walk you through the process and, and make it very very simple so give clint a shout long time sponsor of the show now he has been a supporter for a long time and uh we appreciate him and i will always support clint as well i can i'm a walking billboard or walking walking audio billboard for clint whenever someone says actually this guy i was talking to the other day was like yeah i've been looking at buying a house i was like gotta call clint hammond so it's not just on the show in my real life i am constantly telling people that clint is the best mortgage guy in the columbia area um clinthammond.com is how you can get more information there yeah wes has a lot more experience with buying houses and being in the market and all that stuff than i do but i know that if i were buying a house in columbia i would hit up clint hammond i don't know if that will happen ever but we uh, will one year from now you're going to be hitting him up kendall <laughs> if i'm still in columbia a year from now we will i don't know we'll see it's scary times going into my senior year but uh wes i do want to get into some recruiting talk and then we'll talk about sec media day and i'm seeing a lot of questions about two things gg jackson being the first one and then i'm seeing a lot about nicholas harbour as well so while we're on the football topic let's start with nicholas he is a guy whose name has uh, been tossed around a lot, especially over the last few days on the Insiders Forum on, on Gamecock Central. Um, he's put out his top seven. That was on May 28th. So South Carolina, one of those schools in his top seven, five-star athlete out of Archbishop Carroll in Maryland. So I don't know if you know anything about this, Wes, or if this is just kind of some hype that might need to be downplayed a little bit. Yeah, no, so, uh, so Harbor... This guy, you know, I, I think he's ranked the number one athlete um, on some of the services in the country. And in that sense, when they say, you know, you're an athlete, that's just like you can play any number of positions. But when I look at Harbor, Kendall, I think he literally could be the number one athlete from a like literal, the best athleticism of any prospect in the entire country. I mean, he's six foot five, 230 pounds. He runs like a 10 to 100, which is like one of the top times in the entire country. Again, at 6'5", 230 pounds. So he has literally Olympic potential in track. Like this, this guy could say, forget college football. I'm just going to go be an Olympian. And he would have a chance. Like that is how much of a stud freak athlete this kid is. And on top of it, he's smart as hell, too. Like, this kid is, like, he, he is everything, like, complete package. And Carolina first got him on campus. Here's the backstory: They got him on campus way back last summer, and Eric Kimry was recruiting him to play tight end. And that, I believe, was probably a, a pipe dream for Kimry at the time because I looked at him once and said, there's no way he's ever going to play tight end because schools are going to want him to rush the passer, which now is the case. He's playing, he's going to probably be an edge guy, defensive end guy, but Carolina to get to the point, they are in it. They've been in the top seven. The, the talk lately has been because of a quote and give me a second. I want to, I want to credit this correctly because we do not still, information around here Kenny. um and uh, it's gonna it's coming from a competitor but we're, we're still going to give credit because it was a it was a quick quote to sam webb from michiganinsider.com and that's the 24 7 michigan site so complete credit there but he said um south carolina has been um you know my favorite for some time. So I, I think a lot of people ha have obviously taken that and, and run with it. Um, let me give you the exact quote. The Gamecocks have been my favorite school for a minute. Um, I'll say ever since I went there last year. So Carolina is very, very, very clearly in it. Um, 
Now, that said, I've followed a lot of recruiting in my day. They've got to get him back on campus if they're truly going to land him. Like, um, he was there for the unofficial. As far as I know, has not returned since then. Um, and he did not – it was talked about take, him taking an official visit for that big June 24th weekend. That was kind of the aim. That didn't happen. I think he went to Miami instead. So, if – if Carolina's going to truly land him, they've got to get him back for a fall official visit. They've got to make that happen. Now, I was told towards the end of camp by somebody who would know that the conversation has still been good. Like, there's been constant communication with South Carolina and with Harbor. He's still he's still talking to them, still, you know, is still taking place. So that's a good sign. I wouldn't run, predict him to Carolina just yet. That quote could have been more like, you know, they, they've been a favorite of mine as opposed to like the favorite. Could have been what he meant. So I, I don't think you're going to say he's definitely going to South Carolina. But is he a guy worth talking about? Of course. Um, is he an absolute incredible athlete and kid? Yes. Um, we'll see. Can they get him on campus this fall would be my question. And then if that happens, I think he's really, really going to be – at that point, it becomes a storyline worth diving into from a South Carolina perspective. Pup Howard on that already. He was recruiting him <laughs> on Twitter last night. He said uh, at – you have that pulled up? Yes, I do. Let's make a deal. So he tagged Nicholas. Let's make a deal. Nicholas said, what's the deal? And Pup said, if I beat you in a race, you have to come play with me in Willie B. Deal. And uh, yeah, that gained some traction for sure. And then Nicholas also retweeting a tweet by the Cotton Gin, who deserves some love and a shout out for their recruiting efforts as well. They were right on that. We want Nicholas Harbor already up on the billboard at five points at the Cotton Gin. So uh, going to be interesting to follow. I know you'll be on that for sure, Wes. And, and anything that comes up will obviously be on Gamecock Central. That that, that Twitter um, conversation, it's hilarious, though. Because Pup, Pup know, he knows how fast Harbor is. He's seen right. the time. He's seen the videos. But still just challenged him to a race. And then people were responding to Pup saying, like, you're going to race that guy. And Pup was responding, like, no worries, I got this. Like I, I feel I feel like he's got something up his sleeve. I, I can't tell you what that is. I have no idea. But I feel like Pup has got he's he's got a trick up his sleeve to possibly um to I I don't know if there's like different uh, obstacles on this race or, or what he has in mind, but I, I've got a feeling he has a plan. It doesn't have to be a foot race. He did not say a foot race, it could be a scooter race, it could be a bike race. Could be a car race. It could be a car Hopefully race. Not, but not that. Uh, but it could be a skating race. They could be rollerblading down the road. We don't know. It could be like a mental race. Like who's the first person that can get certain? Like, you just I don't know. It could be interesting. Uh, but yeah, we'll definitely be following this Nicholas Harbor situation as the story develops and speaking of developing stories a great segue into talking about Gigi Jackson and I wish that Colin Taylor was not so lame and on a cruise this week because he is the guy that knows all about Gigi Jackson he's the basketball guy for Gamecock Central but we'll try our best here to do a little rundown a little recap and then talk about what we do know in terms of of G.G. Jackson. So, Wes, do you want to kind of go through the story, a little quick backstory on G.G., where he was at with South Carolina, where he committed, and then where we are now? Yeah, so um, obviously the G.G. Jackson saga um, goes all the way back to uh, – what, what are you laughing at? Saga, the way you it said it. It is a saga. <laughs> so um, dramatic, like the Twilight saga. Yeah, the saga of G.G. Jackson. Um South Carolina felt really, really good about landing him when Frank Martin was here. Obviously, Frank Martin got fired. At that point, it became, I don't want to say a foregone conclusion, but it became very, very likely he was going to go to North Carolina. Well, Jamie Shaw, who, all credit to Jamie, who has been all over this thing, 
he puts out and this was right when i was going on vacation because my people started texting me about about gg like it, it goes to show you how big this recruitment how big his name is um just my friends who some of them aren't even big basketball fans they're just like what the heck is going on with gg jackson jamie shaw puts out this article saying essentially asking the question, will G.G. Jackson decommit and reclassify to 2023? And that is, or 2022, I should say. That, to me, is kind of the storyline here. It seems like if he was still going to remain in his class, then North Carolina was going to be the school. He would stick with it. That would be where he was going. But reclassifying, it's a little bit different situation. North Carolina has guys at his position for that class. And South Carolina, obviously, he'd come right in and start and, and play right away. So Carolina, it sounds like, has been, has been steadily doing their part behind the scenes to work this situation. He has not signed with North Carolina. He has only verbally committed. And first of all, for Jamie to even put out the article saying that means there's a chance that it's going to happen. And since then, Jamie has changed his prediction from – North Carolina, where he was committed before to South Carolina. So he is predicted with a, I believe, 60% confidence on the RPM that he would flip to South Carolina. So here's what I know. Without knowing the inner workings and the ins and outs of it, this is a very real thing. This is not just rumor. Um, I've had several people text me while I was at the beach and just say, hey, I've been hearing that there is a ton of fire to this smoke and just words kind of gotten around in the community that he may be going to South Carolina. And so I think it's real. If I had to guess, I would say it's probably going to happen, but you know, we'll see anytime you have these big boy basketball recruiting battles, you can't really count it until, um, you know, it's finalized, but what a game changer that would be for the game cops. And I, I dr actually drove by the Cotton Gin yesterday, Kendall, and You're they had their points. they had their come home Gigi Jackson sign yeah. up, and uh, so Thomas Dugas, that's the uh, former uh, former Gamecock worker who uh, helps run the Cotton Gin and, and does those signs. Uh, Thomas putting in the extra effort with uh, with these recruiting classes and. That, that would change the perception. I mean, you got it, you know, with one guy in basketball can change everything. So mm -hmm. we'll see what happens there. Kendall's giving me some weird looks right now, y'all. So I don't well, know what he's looking at over there. But I'm looking at Gigi's likes because he does like things on Twitter that could be telling. I know that Mike Yuva posted a couple days ago that he liked a tweet from heat check hoops and it says 2023 five star gregory gg jackson is now up to four crystal ball predictions for gamecock men's basketball via 24 7 sports all this while currently committed to north carolina quite the story developing so gg likes that then as of yesterday i don't know if we have posted this yet or said this but darius rush had posted a tweet saying at Gigi Jackson, no place like home. Gigi likes that tweet. And then he also liked a tweet from Savelle Newton that says, Gigi Jackson, go where you're going to be the man. Go where your story will always be told forever. Go where after 20 years from leaving a place, you will still be mentioned among the greatest on every list made. Where you go, don't matter. Many will follow just because you are you. So I don't know. You know what? Are, you, are we at the point of this where we're going to read into the Twitter likes? I mean, I'm not trying to read into it too much, but, but I'm just saying, like, why would you go like that on Twitter? I mean, I guess, you know, it's a story and your name is out there and whatnot, and I'm not saying that's why he is or isn't, but why would you go like that on Twitter, especially a tweet that, like, basically says that your crystal ball predictions are – favoring Gamecock basketball over UNC. I don't know. It's weird. So you're, not, you're not saying, but you're just saying. Like, it's I'm not saying anything. I'm not speculating. I'm not sitting here saying GG is or isn't committing to South Carolina. I'm just saying take some of that. Take what you will 
make your assumptions based off of that. I had the chance to interview Gigi right after he won the state championship, either at the end of February. I don't remember. All the time goes together, but it was at some point like February or March. And um, he was really cool to talk to, like a great kid. And obviously we knew that he was very high on South Carolina. That was when Frank was still there. But if Lamont Paris is able to get this done, uh, huge. I mean, game changers. And you talked about it. In football, yes, you can have a game changer, but you're also going to give out dozens more scholarships. Mm -hmm. In basketball, you only give out so many. You can literally have a game changer on your team as a freshman too. And that's something you don't always see in football. Um, so Mike just said, as I said on the GC forum, this reminds me of free agency and pro sports with players liking tweets. Sometimes it's something, sometimes it's nothing. Hmm. That's true. That's true. So Kendall, um, I'm going to ask the question that the uh, readers or listeners or watchers may be asking, were there likes, of other recent tweets that pointed to North Carolina or to other outcomes? Or was it more like there aren't really many tweet likes and the only ones there were positive for South Carolina? So, you see what I'm saying? So there were a couple about South Carolina. And then right before the one that Mike had posted from Heat Check that talked about the crystal ball, uh, a man by the name of Alex Karamanos said North Carolina head coach Hubert Davis is courtside watching five-star UNC commit Gigi Jackson. He liked that. Um, and then from there, I'm not seeing a whole lot. Um, he liked one from Joe Tipton, who works for On3 on the 3rd of July, that says, well, five-star Gigi Jackson decommit from North Carolina, Jamie Shaw with more again. It's a tweet like you can't sit there and be like, oh, this is defining. Like, this is exactly what's going to happen. He liked one about UNC, but he's also liked several about South Carolina and the speculation there as well. So it's interesting. It is quite the story that is developing here. And uh, Colin Taylor is certainly the guy. He has all of the information when it comes to that. Uh, but as we get on and we start to talk about SEC Media Day, we're going to take a quick little break and talk about Liberty Tax, a brighter way to do your taxes and overcome your tax anxiety. They've got locations in Irmo, Lexington, and Columbia. You can call them at 803-462-5576. If you're worried about your taxes like I am, hit them up. Never too early to get started, even though we've got a little while until tax season comes. But super thankful to Liberty Tax for being a sponsor of GC Live. Yes, certainly. And uh, although the tax deadline has passed, uh, they are still helping you cure your tax anxiety. As you said, Kendall, uh, you can file an extension. They have locations open Monday through Friday. If you own a small business and need tax advice, uh, if you need bookkeeping and payroll services for your LLCs, your S Corps, or your C Corps, or if you owe money to the IRS, uh, you can meet with a local professional. They will represent you in settling your debt as opposed to having to deal with one of those late night 1-800 numbers. Again, like Kendall said, several locations in Columbia and 803-462-5576 is the number to get in touch with them. We certainly appreciate our great sponsors like Liberty Tax for supporting us here on GC Live. And uh, Kendall, let's talk SEC Media Day. You'll be there. Full team from Gamecock Central will be there. A full team, not the full team. But we're not all – every single one of us won't be there. But uh, Kendall's going to be there. Colin's going to be there. Mike's going to be there. Um, what, uh, what What's your excitement level for media day? I see you grinning. I'm really excited. I'm so excited. I know that some people dread – media day it's a lot there are a lot of people there it is busy but I really like it I've never done SEC media day I've done ACC before which was cool but it's not to the level of SEC SEC is a four-day extravaganza ACC is two days so Four days, Shane Beamer on day two. He's going to be joined alongside of Nick Saban, who I'm sure will have some interesting things to say, especially after the summer he's had. Uh, he'll be joined alongside of 
Mike Leach as well from Mississippi State, and then I believe Clark Lee from Vanderbilt, and then Shane Beamer as well. So that's on Tuesday the 19th. Is that right? Yeah, Tuesday the 19th. Um, so we will be there for that. I believe we're going on Monday as well. So we'll have coverage at the start of the week, but I'm really excited. I mean, it's kind of the official kickoff to football season. And I think the big topic of conversation at this point and something that's been brought up on Gamecock Central by Mike is who South Carolina is going to be bringing with them to SEC Media Day. In the past, they've been able to bring three players. Last year, it was just two because of COVID. South Carolina hasn't announced who they're bringing yet. Um, which I think is very interesting because a lot of people sitting there saying you've got to bring Spencer Rattler. This is a chance for you to get national media coverage. SEC Network is going to be there. ESPN is going to be there. It's a chance for you to get your face, your program, your team in front of the nation. Spencer Rattler is a national known popular name. Get him there. Other people saying, you know, those two or three players that are going to go it should be players that have played for a good amount of time. Captains, seniors, Josh Van has been a name in there. Some people say DK Joyner. Um, so I'm interested to see who South Carolina brings because I think this year more than any year in the past, it's kind of a toss up. Yeah, I think you got to take Rattler. Um, he's such a big national name. And, uh, you know, as far as continuing some of the, just the positive publicity for the program recently, I think you got to go Rattler. Um, you know, past that, I could give you several guys I think would be deserving that would make sense. I think Zach Pickens has really taken on quite a bit of ownership uh, of the program and, and just feels like uh, that guy who's moved into that, that upperclassman, like this is my program type role. So, you know, I think Pickens is a guy who could go, like you said, Cam Smith, Josh Van. Um, the carry on Joyner is such a um, positive guy for the program as well. And, and just uh, it has meant so much as far as how he carries himself. He, he could be a guy, any, any of these older offensive linemen, you know, I, I think would be great representatives, you know, Eric Douglas, uh, Javon Gwynn, uh, you know, some guys like that, Dylan Wanham. I, I think, I think Dylan was a little bit more of a quiet kid when he first arrived at South Carolina, but is a little bit more, you know, maybe of, of a talker now than he once was. So you've got, I mean, you've got a, a really good group of, of a pool of players to pick from. I would think the only guarantee, in my opinion, and again, it's not coming from any information, just you got, you got to take Rattler. And uh, past that, we'll see. I mean, it is, it, it is kind of, it's kind of one of those things where it's a nice honor. I don't know if you necessarily enjoy it, you know, but it, it is a nice honor to be picked to, uh, to go at some point. It probably gets a little bit, um, I don't know, annoying to be asked. You're going to be asked the same questions all day. So they do it. I don't know how they do it at SEC. Um, but I know that there's like, you know, the opportunity for them to be at least the head coach to like, do a press conference type of style situation. And then there's usually like a radio row where they have individual interviews. Um, I don't know though. Like, I don't know if they're going to take Spencer. I would hope they would take Spencer just from the perspective of you need to have him out in front of the national media. It's something that people really care about. It's a storyline that people outside of the Columbia and the Gamecock community want to hear about. Uh, so it gives you the press. And I think that's, that's a good thing. Um, but I don't know when they're going to announce it again, a week from tomorrow is when Shane Beamer will be up in front of everybody alongside of his players. So it's going to be good. I think Shane Beamer got a good day too. Like I think he's surrounded with good coaches. I'm excited that he's going to be there with Nick Saban, with Mike Leach, uh, two big personalities in SEC football. So we'll have a ton of content coming from there. Like all day long, we're going to be doing live updates and a post vlogs, videos, writing, literally everything that you can imagine, prepare to be blown up with SEC Media Day coverage because uh, it's going to be crazy. Colin's already sent our list of things that we have to do, and it's about the length of a novel. So can't wait. <laughs> Not surprised at all. Um, 
but now you'll enjoy it in the past they've there there's like the big room basically and then there's a hundred exaggerating but there's just a bunch of other little rooms you know they have radio row they have a tv room they have a a separate sometimes internet room but but you kind of have access to all of them and a lot of times media day is about like sifting through the repeating of questions and then kind of grabbing what what's something new that that you're going to get out of this and a lot of times you know i i think beamer will kill it with the national and regional media because last year it was a little bit more about him and kind of creating having to create his own hype uh, i think at this because he wasn't you know the, the beamer name carried a lot of weight don't get me wrong but you didn't have anything on the field to point to and uh you know the big the biggest topic i remembered from that was basically the we want uh tight ends you know the quote that was directed towards um delp so that was like the biggest part of the conversation that i remember from last year this year you know he's got a a, a season to point to where you overachieved uh, you know compared to expectations all the transfer guys all the stuff he's talked about all off season but i, I think that there'll be some There'll be some actual like true national and regional interest in what he has to say. So that will go a long way. And then the big thing, the time you normally get any actual news from these things is that a lot of times when the coaches get there, um, they'll speak to a small group, like to the local media as well, and just give an update on the team and take questions, which that's actually, in my experience, when some, you know, you may get some roster news or you may get some, some information about some guys that have stood out in summer workouts. And that's when the actual news comes in my experience. We'll be there for all of it again next Tuesday, Shane Beamer at SEC Media Day. Wes, I think that might round things out today. We got to a lot talking about Dylan Lonergan, talking about the recent commits, talking about Nicholas Harbor, Gigi Jackson, SEC Media Day. Lots discussed on the show for sure and so glad to have you back from vacation it just wasn't the same without Wes Mitchell (laughs) I'm I'm glad to be back Kendall um let's let's do another let's do another one of these this week if uh if we can Mm -hmm. we'll do it and then we'll try to go live uh from SEC media day that's our hope our goal it'll probably be a little hectic but um I will try to to go live from there it's in Atlanta this year so Looking forward to it. But yeah, hopefully back a little bit later on this week with more to come. If you're not subscribed, head over to Gamecock Central. Wes, you have a Go Braves party? tonight. Let me just say that. Big series with the Mets. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm going to cheer for the Mets. I'm sorry. I'm just wow. not – like, I'm not not a Braves fan, but – You are not a Braves fan, it sounds like. I'm a Cubs fan, but I work in the White Sox organization. So I yeah. kind of I, I support both the White Sox and the Cubs, which is a little crazy. I don't think that's legal. And <laughs> hopefully you didn't put you're a Cubs fan in your resume because you wouldn't have gotten that job. But Trey says, let's go Braves. I'm with him. Huge series, Braves, Mets. We're, we're going to put the Mets back where they deserve, which is behind the Braves in the NLE standings. That's my so final much, thought for the day. So much tea. All right. Well, Wes, thank you for joining us on this edition of GC Live. Thanks for having me. Um, head over to GamecockCentral.com. Everybody subscribe. Check us out on social media, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, all the whole thing. If you haven't seen my interview with Spencer Rattler, be sure to check that out. It is unlisted, so you can only get access to it by heading to GamecockCentral.com. But it is 110% free. So go over there, watch that interview with Spencer Rattler from last week. Thank you all so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your day, and we will see you soon.